Kelly LeBrock burst onto the scene in the 1980s, captivating audiences with her stunning beauty and undeniable talent. She appeared in several popular films of the era, including Weird Science, The Woman in Red, and Hard to Kill. But despite her success, she abruptly left the entertainment industry and disappeared from the public eye. Now at 63, Kelly has re-emerged, and fans are eager to catch up with the enigmatic star. Facts First presents Kelly LeBrock is 63. See her now after she quit Hollywood. Kelly's Early Years Kelly LeBrock's backstory is nothing short of remarkable. Born in New York and raised in London, she comes from a diverse background with a French-Canadian father and an Irish mother. In fact, her given name pays homage to her maternal grandmother from the Irish County Arma. After spending some time in London, Kelly returned to her birthplace of New York City and launched her modeling career at the young age of 16. But her career truly took off when she was featured in Vogue at age 19 quickly becoming one of the most sought-after models in the world. Her talent and beauty caught the eye of Christian Dior, who personally selected her to become a brand ambassador. With just 30 days of work per year, Kelly reportedly earned a substantial sum, though the exact figure remains unknown. The Woman in Red Her path to becoming a pop culture icon wasn't without twists and turns. But it wasn't until she became the spokesperson for Pantene that she truly captured the world's attention. Her appearance in one of the brand's most iconic advertisements helped to make her a recognizable face, thanks in part because of her memorable line, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. In fact, the catchphrase has remained in use to this day, even among those who might not be familiar with Kelly's work. Interestingly, it was perhaps this memorable TV commercial that helped her land her most famous role to date in Weird Science. Her appearance in a steamy shower during the ad may have caught the eye of the film's creators, leading her to casting in the movie. But Weird Science was not actually her first foray into acting, as she had already begun to establish herself as a talented performer before landing the role that would eternally cement her status as a pop culture icon. Her talents as an actress were soon recognized, and she landed the lead role in the 1984 romantic comedy The Woman in Red, which was directed by and starred Gene Wilder. Kelly portrayed Charlotte, a woman who captures the heart of Teddy, played by Wilder, after he becomes obsessed with her following a Marilyn Monroe-style moment over a ventilation grate. It seemed LeBrock's career was beginning to fall into place. The next year, she took the role for which she's best remembered, starring in the comedy sci-fi classic Weird Science. The movie, written and directed by legendary filmmaker John Hughes, also featured the talents of Anthony Michael Hall and Elon Mitchell Smith. The film proved a major success, solidifying Kelly's status as one of the most talented actresses of her generation. Into the Woods After becoming a household name thanks to her iconic role in Weird Science, Hollywood opened up to LeBrock. Pretty much from there, she could have gone practically anywhere. Her acting prowess was further showcased in the 1990 film Hard to Kill, which also became significant as this was the project where she met future husband Stephen Seagal. Despite this, Kelly decided to step away from the limelight following a widely publicized divorce from Seagal in 1996. Speaking to Fox News about her decision to leave Hollywood behind, Kelly revealed that being famous at a young age had caused her more harm than good. She shared that being in the spotlight is not for everyone, and she wanted to raise her children outside the Hollywood bubble. Kelly left Hollywood and lived in what she referred to as the wilderness with her children without so much as a television for 25 years. She describes herself as a single mom who did her best to raise her three kids. According to her, she could always make the decision to return to her career, but then she would never have the opportunity to return to her children if she left them. At the end of the day, she put her family first. She reflects that while some people can balance their career and family life, for her, the fame was done and dusted. Not only has Kelly thrown away her television, but she's also done her best to stay away from social media. She thinks social media as a whole has gotten out of control, and frankly, she doesn't want anything to do with it. To avoid the frenzy of the online realm, she's gotten rid of her computer and has an internet connection with very low bandwidth and spotty service. Kelly's marriage with Steven Seagal was a nightmare. 
1987, fate brought Kelly LeBrock and Steven Seagal together in Japan. While LeBrock was there for a photo shoot, her publicist introduced her to Seagal, who was an aspiring actor and screenwriter at the time. Despite her initial plan to blow him off, Seagal's relentless pursuit paid off, and the two started seeing each other. LeBrock was enamored of Seagal's many talents. He could speak Japanese fluently, do acupuncture, chiropractic, play guitar and drums, and draw. She found him to be an all-around renaissance man, and they got married that same year. But their relationship soon turned sour when LeBrock experienced an incident of abuse at his hands. Despite the troubled marriage, LeBrock stayed with Seagal because of their three children. But after nine years of marriage, they divorced, and LeBrock wrote a tell-all book about her experience. In an interview she gave following her divorce, she revealed that she became too afraid to leave the house and moved her family to a different neighborhood to shield them from the details of the divorce. LeBrock decided to become a homebody, fearing everything and struggling with low self-esteem. She even got rid of the TV to prevent her children from seeing any news about the divorce. Despite the difficult end to their marriage, LeBrock and Segal co-starred in the aforementioned 1990 action movie Hard to Kill. It's hard to imagine what it must have been like for LeBrock having to work with her abuser like that. But all we know is at least she eventually freed herself of his abusive tendencies. Kelly Today after divorcing Segal, Kelly went on to have two brief marriages with Victor Dry and Fred Steck, both of which ended in divorce. But despite her failed marriages, Kelly has remained a devoted mother to her three children. She's continued to pursue acting, albeit sporadically, and has appeared in several indie films and TV movies, such as The Sorcerer's Apprentice, Zerophilia, Ten Days in a Madhouse, and A Prince for Christmas. Kelly was last seen on screen in the 2021 film Charlie Boy. She's also shared her personal struggles on reality TV shows such as Celebrity Fit Club, Hell's Kitchen, and Growing Up Supermodel. LeBrock is also passionate about charitable causes and supports animal rights and domestic violence prevention. Following the death of her brother Harold in 2008, Kelly started devoting a significant amount of time to tending to and advocating for the terminally ill. She's also been the spokeswoman for Club Carson, an organization whose members are children who are suffering from cancer. She currently resides on a peaceful ranch in California with her many pets and is content with her simple lifestyle. Though she may no longer be in the spotlight, she remains grateful for her fans' support and appreciates their continued love and support throughout the year. LeBrock may not be quite as famous as she once was, but she's still a beautiful and talented woman who's lived an interesting and inspiring life. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Kelly LeBrock? Did you know she got her start as a model before landing iconic roles in The Woman in Red and Weird Science? Let us know in the comments section below.